Welcome to r slash best of Redditor updates, where we have one of the most unhinged, insane, delusional, out of touch, psychotic posters I've ever seen. Our next Reddit post is from r slash relationship advice. I'm a 50 year old woman and my daughter-in-law who's 24 gave birth and she doesn't seem to want to have a relationship with me, which is making it difficult to have a relationship with my son who's 31 and my new granddaughter. Hello Reddit, I'm looking for advice on how to build a relationship with my daughter-in-law and get over the rift that she's causing since giving birth. My son David, who's 31, has been married to my daughter-in-law, B, who's 24, since September of 2020. Due to the pandemic, I never really got to know her because they only dated for about a year before they got married, and I didn't know about her until they dated for almost six months. I love my son very much, but I feel like our relationship has been rocky since they got married. My son has a daughter from a previous relationship who's 10, and since they got together, I haven't had the same relationship with her. I know this is partially because he moved out of my house, very suddenly without saying anything I may add, and I no longer get to see her on weekends. I try to get them to bring her to visit when they have her, but usually I only see her once a month or so, and lately it's felt like she's been more distant when she visits. I think that this is because B says negative things about me around her, and I find that unfair. They just had a baby at the end of January. She was induced due to preeclampsia and in labor for three days before having a C-section. I had been in an accident a few weeks prior, and I don't have a vehicle, and my son refused to pick me up to be there for the labor at all or to see the baby in the hospital. But her parents got to see the baby and were in the parking lot the entire time. I called him when she was in labor a few times, but on the second day after her water broke, I called him and heard her snap at him to get off the phone and he refused to accept any calls after that. I just wanted to know that the three of them were okay. She was in the hospital for two days after the c-section and they wouldn't stop to visit me on their way home after the birth because she was hurting. Even though she had painkillers she could have taken and she didn't feel right according to my son. This is when I became concerned that she had postpartum depression. My daughter picked up B's prescriptions and some groceries for them, and she got to see the baby that night. My daughter and B have a relationship that's apparently pretty good. I was supposed to visit a couple of days after they got home, but she ended up insisting that something was wrong and went back to the doctor who apparently sent her to the hospital. My son told me they diagnosed her with postpartum preeclampsia, but I'm pretty sure that's something that only happens during pregnancy and went away after birth, so I'm pretty sure he was confused. Something, okay, something's fishy here. Postpartum preeclampsia is a rare condition that occurs when you have high blood pressure. Lady, it's a Google search. You could just Google search it if you think they're lying. Also, if you were so worried about seeing your daughter-in-law during the birth, then why didn't you just get an Uber instead of begging your son to come pick you up and leave his wife behind when she's trying to give birth? So when I started this post, I sort of assumed coming into it that maybe the daughter-in-law is the problematic one, but as the story's unfolding, I'm kind of starting to get the vibe that maybe OP is the problem here. So I don't know, this is a long post, I don't know where this is going, but I don't know, this is just a little fishy. The day after they admitted her again was my birthday. I called her around 8am that morning to see what was really going on, but she didn't answer. A while later, my son called me and wished me a happy birthday and asked me why I'd called B. I admit that I snapped at him and I said that she should be returning my call because I called her. I hung up on him and maybe 5 minutes later she called me. I told her that she should have called me and that I wanted to hear her voice and hear from her what was going on since my son gets confused. I then asked her if this was a mental or physical issue and she went silent before saying physical. Okay, that's red flag number three. Guys, OP might be crazy. I asked if she was sure and she got kind of snippy and said they had padding on her bed because she was a seizure risk and she couldn't be alone with her newborn so she was pretty sure. I didn't comment on her tone because I was sure that she was stressed. Okay, yeah, OP is not so. Two weeks later, my son picked me up and brought me to their home to visit. I stayed for a few hours, and B didn't really make any effort to talk to me. 
She was just so quiet and sat on the couch. When my son took me home, I asked why B was so unhospitable and he said that I'd been rude while she was in the hospital. That she shouldn't have had to call me and that I shouldn't have asked if it was a mental or physical problem because he had already told me that it was physical. He also said that I shouldn't have posted anything on Facebook before B about the baby being born and that I was rude when he called me to make me take it down. Bia doesn't post on social media very often, so I didn't think that it would be a big deal. He hasn't picked me up to see the baby because he says he needs to be there to help with the baby. And they won't bring the baby to me because he says the baby isn't allowed in my house. I told my son that I'm planning to quit my job to babysit for them, but I haven't even gotten her return to work date and she hasn't once thanked me for doing it. Overall, I feel like B is holding on to some very petty things and is using them to keep me from my son and granddaughters. I want a relationship with B, but I'm missing some critical bonding time with the baby and I'm gonna struggle to forgive her for it. Especially over some petty nonsense that she won't even bring up to talk to me. I really want to send a text and lay out all of my feelings to her and just hash it out. But I understand that there are probably some cultural differences at play with all this too, so I could use some advice. Oh man, okay, alright. <laughs> okay, I see why this post has so many upvotes, because it's super long. Normally it's difficult for a really long post to get super high upvotes, but this post, you guys, is going off the rails. Okay, so down in the comments, OP is getting blasted, getting ripped apart. I'm going to read this long reply that one of the commenters make because it's necessary to understand OP's response to it. Lady, if you don't pull your head out of your own butt, you're not going to be part of their lives at all. You're not owed nearly any of what you seem to think you are. When it comes to their baby, they don't owe you anything. One, your son had two priorities when his wife was in labor, his wife and their baby not you. He didn't have time to come pick you up or talk to you on the phone. Have you ever heard of a taxi? Two, she shouldn't have had to take a pain pill just so they can stop by and see you on their way home. How incredibly selfish of you. They did the right thing and went straight home. Three, are you seriously questioning a doctor's diagnosis? Do you really think it's appropriate to ask her if it's physical or mental? Are you mental? Four, you're lucky that anyone called you back at all. They're tired and are learning how to care for their newborn. And that's after your daughter-in-law had a complicated labor and delivery and complications after birth. No one has the emotional bandwidth to deal with your entitlement. 5. You inconvenienced your son and had him pick you up and drive you home. Again, taxi, Uber, Lyft are better options. Then you're complaining that his wife, who's exhausted and is still healing, was inhospitable. I'm guessing she was saying plenty to you in her head, but was too polite to actually verbalize it. 6. Do they even want you to babysit their baby? Did they actually ask this of you, or did you just decree that this was happening? 7. You do not post baby news on Facebook without the parent's permission. You were rude and overstepped. 8. If you want to send them a text, send them a sincere apology for being a pushy, entitled pain in the butt and promise you'll behave better in the future. Then, oh, <laughs> then OP replies and the full-blown Karen entitlement comes out to play. I'm a grandparent and I do deserve to be in my grandchildren's lives. I also deserve not to have my eldest granddaughter turned against me. Saying they owe me nothing is incorrect, and the courts would agree with that. I love them both, so I don't want it to have to come to that, but I am owed that. Owed is in all caps. I am owed that. 1. If he would have came the first night before she was in real labor, then he wouldn't have needed to talk to me. We don't have taxis, and the Uber would have been well past my budget. 2. She refused to take any of the painkillers once discharged, period. That was selfish of her. And I had food for them too, so my son wouldn't have had to cook. It wasn't just for me to see the baby. Okay, I have to stop right there. Not taking painkillers. Lady, lady, lady. She was breastfeeding. She's a new mom. Of course she doesn't want to take painkillers because then she's giving her newborn painkillers. Are you bonkers? Three. No, I was questioning if my son had the right information. He relayed wrong things before. 
Four, I understand that from her perspective after reading some of the comments. However, in my family, it's just common to call back regardless, especially after having a baby. I see it's a cultural difference. Guys, I gotta ask. I'm sorry about the interruptions. I'm a little bit triggered by this story. Also, I'm a little bit shocked, so I have to keep pausing and like recalibrate because this woman is surprising me nonstop. When she says, I see that it's a cultural difference, is that just racism? Is she just being racist here? This kind of feels like dog whistle racism, but I'm not 100%. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Five, I can't Uber to where they live. Otherwise, I'd be there every day. If that was an option, I would have definitely jumped on it instead of having him pick me up. But Uber isn't in this tiny town. Six, I told my son that I would babysit after I heard B tell my daughter about her struggle to find a reputable daycare without a year-long wait and how she was scared for the safety of her baby. They won't have to worry if I watch her. 7. My son only said not to post pictures. I didn't realize announcing that I was a grandma again would be a big deal. I deleted the post. 8. I told my son that I was sorry for hurting her feelings when he told me. I've always apologized to him when he's told me that I've done something wrong in her eyes, whether I think that I was wrong or not. I don't want to hurt her feelings ever. I want her to know that she doesn't have to run to my son though. She can come to me and I want a chance to explain myself to her. Then, two weeks later, OP posted an update to r slash legal advice. Interesting. I'm seeking legal advice on getting grandparent rights. <laughs> of course, of course she wants to sue. I'm sorry. Okay, focus, focus. I'm seeking advice on getting grandparent rights in Indiana. My son has two daughters with two different women. The oldest is 10, and he and her mother were never married. The youngest is almost two months old, and he and her mother are married. I was under the impression that any grandparent could petition for custody slash visitation in the U.S., but the way that I'm reading it, I can't unless my son is incarcerated or they aren't married. Is this correct? What do I need to do to seek joint custody of my granddaughters? Yo, what the actual F? She's not seeking visitation, she's seeking custody? What do I need to build a solid case? I've already tried resolving this without going this drastic, but his wife doesn't want to work with me. Okay, so the commenters in the r slash legal advice post are basically saying that OP is just out of luck because unless the parents are unfit parents, OP just can't sue for custody. They're also calling out OP because she's sending up some red flags and she is angrily defending herself in the comments. I'm not going to read it because it's basically just more of the crazy entitlement from the last post. Then, one week after that, OP posted another update. Well, I apologize to my daughter-in-law for all the things my son listed. Since I'd received feedback about it being my son's job to handle his family, I told him my apologies to pass them along to his wife and I waited. However, I got no response from B. No thank you, no trying to bury the hatchet, nothing. So last, <laughs> last Friday, I made an appointment with an attorney to discuss grandparents' rights and had that appointment on Tuesday. The lawyer told me that I had a good chance with my older granddaughter, but that I would likely get nowhere with the new baby. I filled out some paperwork to get the process started, but Tuesday night, I was questioning if I was doing the right thing. I called one of my friends to discuss it, and I was seriously considering not moving forward with it after talking to her. Then, yesterday, I received this message from B. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. OP, this is B. I just wanted to let you know that our friend told us that you're intending to sue us for grandparent rights, and they also shared everything that you've had to say about me. Let me first say that I have not once kept either of these girls from you, and I have certainly not kept your son from you either. He's a grown man, and if he wanted to talk to you, he's free to do so. You have not asked to come over to visit once your son picked you up. You can't expect us to 1. Read your mind, and 2. Just drop everything and come pick you up. We have a new baby and we have our own lives. I also haven't said a word to you about what happened during the delivery and the postpartum because I have no energy to argue with you. Your son said that you apologized, and I told him that I appreciated it, even though it wasn't a real apology. You apologized for what you did to hurt my feelings, not that my feelings were hurt. I don't have time for your drama. For the record, though, what you said was absolutely disgusting. 
I almost died. It had nothing to do with my mental health. Since you've decided to sue for grandparent rights, we will have no direct contact with you. All contact will need to go through our lawyer. You've been removed from my Facebook. You are not permitted to post any pictures that you've been sent of my child on social media. And my husband's ex, in this case the mother of the other daughter, feels the same way regarding our older daughter. We intend to have our lawyer write something up and send it to you by the end of this week and cease all contact with you. I assume that you'll be served with your visitation paperwork this week as well. You will get no pictures or phone calls going forward. In fact, you'll be blocked. I also hope you realize that you will absolutely lose this case. Your house is not suitable to live in and you would have to be able to pass a drug test. When you lose, we will not resume contact with you. You lost your chance at being a part of our kids' lives by deciding to go to the most nuclear option instead of just communicating with us. Oh my god. Okay, that's the end of B's response, and now we're back to OP writing the post. I tried to respond to her and tell her that I didn't want to go through with it anymore, and I reacted a bit out of anger, but she wouldn't respond to texts or calls. So, I assumed that I really am blocked. I called my son to tell him about the text that she sent, and he said that he knew about it, and it was a lot nicer than what he wanted to send me. So, that's where I am at this point. I'm gonna show my lawyer the text so that it can show how unwilling to forgive and to work with me she is. And hopefully, it'll resolve quickly so that I can at least get visitation rights with my oldest granddaughter. Okay, down in the comments, someone says, Um, drug test? And OP replies, she says that I would have to pass a drug test. I use medical marijuana to help with a chronic illness, but it's still illegal where I live. Okay, so the comments continue, and OP apparently mentions that in addition to having her son, who's married to B, she also has a daughter, and OP says that her daughter is a better mom than B, and then someone asks, why is your daughter a better mother than B? And B says, because they need to have better cultural examples. I think we're about to find out whether or not cultural differences was code for being racist. For instance, the oldest mother is also not from our culture slash race, and her hair is very different from her daughter's. She has no idea how to take care of her hair. It's always a mess. My daughter-in-law has taken some initiative in doing and styling her hair, but she's still not great at it. The girls need someone who can teach them how to handle basic things, like taking care of their skin and hair. I've encouraged them to let me handle the older daughter's hair long before my daughter-in-law came into the picture. Not taking care of a child's hair is a form of neglect. My daughter knows how to do these things because her hair and skin are much closer to theirs, and she can handle it with her own children. Oh god, and then another comment. I don't feel I deserve to be treated better, just equal. We're both equally, oh my god, we're both equally important in my son's life. She's obviously more important in her daughter's life right now, but without me, that baby wouldn't be here. I would drop the grandparents' rights case if I wasn't cut off. I reacted out of anger and desperation, but now it's the only option since I'm cut off. A few people pointed out that there's a post that seems like it's from the daughter's perspective on r slash just no mother-in-law. The post has since been deleted. The woman who posted the just no mother-in-law post asked that it not be reshared, so I have to honor her request. Um, I will say that it does sound like it could be OP's post, and if it is OP's post, then OP is leaving out a lot of information. I can't say what she left out because I want to respect their wishes, but it's really, really bad. Then, two and a half months later, under a completely different username, we have this post. Am I the butthole for removing my son from my will after our relationship ended? I really don't think that I'm wrong, but I just need reassurance that I'm doing the right thing. I'm a, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely the same person. I'm a 50-year-old woman, and I have a son, David, who's 30, who's married to B, who's in her 20s. They have a daughter who's four months old, and my son has a daughter from a previous relationship who's 10. B and I had a falling out after their baby was born, and my son and granddaughters got caught in the crossfire. The falling out happened in March, and I know that I did and said things that I wasn't proud of, and although she hasn't apo- WHAT?! ALTHOUGH SHE HASN'T APOLOGIZED?! For a second there I thought that I'd misread. I, th I thought that she said, although I've apologized, but then I did a double take. 
It would be too, too long to go over the history. But at the most extreme point, I did consult a lawyer for grandparent rights. Blah blah blah, more recap. Okay, for Mother's Day, my daughter decided to take me out to dinner, and she begged David to come along and bring the baby. David eventually did agree since it was Mother's Day, so he, the baby, and B came. B was quiet for most of the dinner, but she did talk to my daughter a few times. I guess they have a pretty good relationship. B held the baby the entire time and wouldn't let me hold the baby or take any pictures. Part of the falling out was over pictures and Facebook, so I found this to be petty. Okay, okay. Overall, I would have called dinner a success. At the end, I hugged my son and told him that I was proud of him for putting his foot down and coming to dinner with his daughter, and that I hoped that he would continue to do that. Looking, <laughs> looking back, I know that I shouldn't have said anything. My son called me later that night and told me that he couldn't continue to have a relationship with me. He said that B was their child's mother and that he wouldn't ever bring the baby anywhere without her blessing. I was drunk when he called because I had a hard time coping, and I admit that I lost it a little bit on the phone call and told him that it was despicable that he couldn't man up to his wife, and that he should have come to see me on Mother's Day because I'm his mother and he ended up hanging up on me. Yo, every paragraph, this story gets crazier and crazier, you guys. I called the next day and was profusely apologizing to him. I know that it was wrong of me to have said what I did, and I told him that I went a relationship with him. He told me that he couldn't do this with me anymore. I've been heartbroken ever since, but I understand, I guess. I called him last night and told him that I wouldn't be contacting him or his wife anymore ever, and that I respected that we wouldn't have a relationship. I also let him know that I'd be removing him as my power of attorney and taking him out of my will so that he never had to be bothered with anything from me ever again. I don't have much to give him anyways. He got mad at me and called me a sorry excuse of a mother, and now my daughter is saying that I'm manipulative. <laughs> I really don't understand how I was wrong in giving him what he wants. Um, in a comment that's too long to read, it's revealed that OP is also a hoarder, apparently. That came out of left field. And then, oh my gosh. So, remember that post from r slash just no mother-in-law that people suspected was posted by B? Well, okay. <laughs> Someone linked that story and was like, hey, is this your daughter-in-law? Because this sounds really familiar. And OP confirmed it. Yes, that was from the daughter-in-law. So it turns out B did leave out a bunch of really, really, really important details of horrible things that she did. She, she continues in a comment. No, I said that I wanted to kill myself because I felt like I had no one. While I was on hold for 72 hours and received treatment, I got set up with my therapist to help deal with some of the trauma, both from what is happening and from past issues. I had a psychotic break. This is one of the actions that I truly regret. Okay, then OP posted an update. After someone posted a link to what I believe is my daughter-in-law's Reddit post and I read some of the verbal beatings I got, I did some more reflection. I feel like her perspective of events really helped to shift my view. I do want to point out that there were several people who told me that I wasn't wrong and this younger generation has a poor view of family values. I really believe that I was judged so harshly because there are so few parents and grandparents on Reddit. I went to my son and my daughter-in-law's house, but it was mostly empty. I found the house had been listed for sale for almost a week and it's currently pending, but I can't find where they moved to and all the photos of the house are mostly empty. I suspect they bought their new house under an LLC, so I'm currently trying to figure out how to find out the name of the LLC and then find their new house. I talked to one of their neighbors, and they said they moved most of their stuff out around the beginning of May, so my son kept this for me for quite a while and didn't even bother to mention it at dinner. My son has just disappeared. My therapist told me to give myself some time to heal before pursuing anything. But for now, my plan is to just save some money and, <laughs> and hire a private investigator to find my son and then rebuild my relationship and his trust so that we can work to get him out from under her. Yo, you guys. This, okay, okay. Focus, Dabney, focus. Again, I recognize that I was wrong in some of this. I recognize that I was overly demanding and critical. I was wrong in some of this, but I don't deserve this. P 
people who use kids and grandkids as pawns are evil. Then, <laughs> someone, okay, someone cross-posted OP's post to r slash am I the devil, and OP angrily replies in that post, Screw everyone here. I am far from being a devil. I am not evil. The person who is evil is the one who took my family completely away from me. My daughter-in-law has completely manipulated my son. I'll admit that I was far from perfect, but I don't deserve what you people are saying about me. I hope one day you guys feel what it's like to lose your child and grandchild to a manipulative person who just wants to cut their family off. Then... Okay. Okay. Oh, I see what this is. Okay. OP makes a post in r slash legal advice. And before I read this, I need you to understand that she's lying here. What she's trying to do is stealthily ask r slash legal advice if she can illegally squat into her son's home and prevent them from selling their home. I'm currently in the process of moving, and I've moved all of my things out of my old house into my newly purchased home, leaving my old home empty until it sells. I had a neighbor who had a squatter issue a few years back, and I'm concerned that with my house being empty, someone will break in and try to claim squatter's rights. Is this possible in Indiana, and would it stop the sale of the house? Okay, alright. This is the end of the post. The post is over. <laughs> I need a second to process my emotions on this. You know the cartoon scene where a cartoon character is at the top of a mountain and they take a snowball and they push the snowball off the mountain and as the snowball rolls, it gets bigger and bigger and more out of control and eventually it's this monstrous huge snowball that's ripping up houses and trees. That's basically what reading this post felt like. Because when the post started off, I just assumed that the daughter-in-law was the problem, but then you go from like, wait, is the daughter-in-law normal and is OP the problem? Then you go to like, wait, is OP nuts? Then you go to like, wait, OP is really nuts. Then you, <laughs> then you go to like, wait, OP is bonkers. She is nutso. I love this reply from Tilful. It's bad. It gets worse. Then it gets worse. Then geez, does it get worse. Then, <laughs> when you thought that it couldn't get worse, it gets worse again. What the actual F? She is spectacularly unhinged. Man, imagine being so absolutely batshit insane that you drive your family away from you and your response is to hire a private investigator to find them and then break into their house and live in their house as a squatter to prevent them from selling their house. And also, by the way... She smokes pot, which is illegal in her country. I'm not going to really judge her because, you know, I'm pro-pot legalization, even though I don't smoke. But she's also a drunk, and she's also a hoarder. This woman is, she's literally insane. I don't know what else to say. I almost kind of feel sorry for her, because what I'm seeing in this post, it's past the point of entitlement, it's past the point of malice, it's past the point of pettiness. We've entered the realm of, like, this person needs professional help. Something's going on with her brain that makes her unable to understand what's normal and how to treat people and how to interact with people. She's she's literally a danger to herself and others. Also, one thing that I couldn't help but notice throughout this post is she kept apologizing over and over and over. She kept saying, I've, I've been reflecting and, you know, I'm really sorry and I've apologized for it. And she said that throughout the post, like, I don't know, seven, eight different times. This is like a pattern for her where she does something awful. Then she says, oh, well, I've done some reflecting and I apologize. Sometimes she does a full apology. Sometimes she does a half apology where she says, yeah, but I don't really think I did anything wrong, but I apologize nonetheless. And then she just expects it to work 10 times out of 10. So she's a great example of someone who knows what to say, like very manipulative. They can say the things they need to say to get the desired output out of the person they're manipulating. But the actions never match up with the words because then she just goes right back to doing something wrong again and then apologizing over and over and over. <laughs> I love this post from Actually Parsley. I read a lot of comments and I did some reflection and really shifted my view. And my, <laughs> my new view is that you're all wrong because you're too young. That's it. Obi, you said that people don't understand you on Reddit because there's no parents or grandparents on Reddit. Let me just say, I'm a parent and I think that you're bonkers. 
I think this woman literally isn't going to stop until she's in jail. I sincerely hope that she never finds her son's family, because if she does, then I genuinely think that they're in danger. Let me ask you guys, is this woman the type of woman to literally steal one or both of her granddaughters and think that she's justified in doing so? Because I actually think that she might be. That was our slash best of Redditor updates. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.